as you can see, it's here. My new espresso machine has arrived and thus begins the next chapter of my coffee journey. So I thought this would be a perfect time to do a coffee bar tour of my setup and my favorite gear. For those unfamiliar, this is the La Marzocco GS3 manual paddle, or MP for short. After over five years, my beloved Linea Mini is entering secondary status, and the GS3 will be my new daily driver and the heart of this channel, as well as my espresso focused content. The driving force behind the switch wasn't based on shot quality, as we probably all already know and realize the Mini is plenty capable of great shots of espresso, but instead the switch was based on controllability and experimentation. As I dive deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of espresso, the Mini was struggling to keep up with the current trends and direction of espresso brewing, with pre-infusion and pressure profiling becoming more and more common. But there was also some more thought behind it. When I thought about replacing the Mini, which was something my channel was completely built on and a lot of my experience with Espresso was built on, I had to put a lot of thought into it. And the two that it came down to was the GS3 and also the Decent. But there were quite a few other things I thought about when it came to choosing the GS3. And I landed on the GS3 for a few different reasons. I mean, for one, I'm a La Marzocco fanboy. I'm not afraid to admit it. I, I love the products, but I'm also not afraid to rip them apart when it's deserved. So, you know, put that out there. But also, a lot of people were interested in me getting a Decent. And I did consider the Decent for a good amount of time and ended up going with the GS3, obviously. But the reason why I did is people were like, oh, get the Decent because the GS3 will alienate your audience because it's so expensive. And yes, it is expensive, but I felt like the GS3 was also more capable of doing things that less expensive machines can also do. I just reviewed the Synchronica, I reviewed the El Rocio Czar, which all have pressure profiling and can all do the things that the GS3 does. So that just seemed like it made more sense to get something like that that is more attainable, at least in the broad sense, as opposed to getting something like the Decent that has control over every little tiny aspect and then people can't actually replicate what I'm doing. So what to expect from the GS3 in the future, obviously it's going to be the mainstay of my espresso content, but with that extra controllability, expect to see more on the topic of brew pressure, as well as a full review of the GS3 MP in the coming months. Sitting beside my GS3 is the Optiono Legome P64. Now, many of you may already be familiar with this. It's not brand new to my bar, and I did do a full review on it recently and covered it in great detail, which I'll link up here in the upper quadrant. But the headlines are, it's a single dosing, low retention grinder, essentially meaning that all the coffee that goes in, comes out. Give or take about 0.1 of a gram. It's capable of grinding for all of your favorite brewing methods, and is my go-to for espresso and filter coffee applications. Also, it has a variable speed motor that moves seamlessly from 200 to 1400 RPMs which is most definitely a topic I'm planning on diving into and testing for an upcoming video, but the main attraction sits inside. The flat 64 mm SSP multi-purpose, also known as unimodal burrs. Designed to minimize fines and maximize clarity, these beauties have cranked out some of the crispiest shots of espresso I've had to date. Of course, none of this would be successful, at least consistently, without my current lineup of accessories. The S-Works Design WDT tool keeps my grinds clump-free and evenly distributed. The Pantechnicon Cambion and Pullman Big Step tampers round out my puck prep routine, and both produce a glove-like fit, leaving no grinds behind and a great overall grip and feel. When I'm feeling something milky, my favorite pitcher is the WPM 15 ounce handless with the round spout that I picked up a few years ago from my friends at Slow Pour Supply. It's the perfect size and a great all around option for most pours. And one of the least glamorous but most used items on my bar, the scale. This is the Akaya Lunar, and it's been rock solid for nearly six years now, in measuring everything and anything that requires accuracy and time. I also recently got a Black Mirror 2, but I haven't had a ton of time on it yet except for a few filter brews, so expect to see more on that one soon. And yes, even though it seems obvious that Espresso is clearly holding a special place in my heart, I do actually make filter from time to time, so I'm going to share my setup for that as well. At the moment, my current go-to dripper is the Aurea V3. This little flat bottom brewer is simple and its ability to make quick and delicious small batch brews is impressive. 
Of course, the kettle needs a little love too. This is the youth kettle from Timor. I like the size and the feel, but most of all the spout that gives me solid control and the more vertical flow that I use on most of my filter brews. And finally, without cups, it's kind of hard to drink coffee. So my favorite ceramic drinking vessels are these beauties from Sarah K Ceramics out of Seattle. And when it comes to glass, I still have a soft spot for the not neutral Vero collection. So as I wrap this one up, I'm going to leave you with a nice workflow montage of the GS3 to get you more familiarized with it, to get the juices flowing, to get everybody hyped on the GS3 in the future of this channel. Of course, take a look at it. Let me know if you have any questions about the GS3, about any of the things shown in this video or something I may have missed. Of course, any other questions are welcome in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thank you.